The ban list is finally here. I'm happy. You should be happy. The Ultra Ball is happy. No more barfing horses on Twitter, hopefully. <laughs> Let's dive on into a very fresh format. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the very much happiest most, Avery LR32, your destroy the ever-living, if I can make myself a ponytail, boo-boo stain off that like and subscribe button. We climb even higher, the almost 1500 ladder. Can't wait to be able to say that. Hope y'all having a fantastic day. Really do appreciate all of the support. If In case you weren't keeping up with my community posts, then you would probably be wondering why I haven't uploaded in like almost two weeks now. I wanted to wait until the new format was here. The new format's here. We got plenty to talk about. And so now that I've had some time to think about this ban list as I've been making videos like crazy uh, after being gone for almost two weeks, I wanted to talk about um, the impact of this ban list. Um, because the more that I look at it, the more I'm thinking, did Konami do enough? And I'm, I saw a lot of the comments here on Twitter that are still continuing to roll in. And a lot of people aren't happy with the list. A lot of people think that they didn't do enough. So let's just go through it all and, and just kind of break this down. So first off, they banned Fiendsmith Lacrima. I can't think of another time outside maybe, uh, what was that card? Super Heavy Samurai Scarecrow, where they banned a card this quick after new cards got released. Because if you remember, we got the new Super Heavy Samurai support, and then the two best decks in the format were uh, Kashtira and Super Heavy. It was either one of those two decks, and then... Boom, we get a ban list, they ban Scarecrow, and then Super Heavy becomes a kind of decent engine that you could play in some decks, um, but it wasn't played in everything, right? Um, and really, it wasn't played in a whole lot of things once Scarecrow got banned, because Scarecrow really held that deck uh, together. Now, by getting rid of Lacrima, you can't bridge into things as easily as you could. You know, now you're basically going to have to, like, let's take Snake Eye, for example. If you still want to play the Fiendsmith cards and you don't have access to Beatrice, you got to play Foolish Burial to go Foolish Burial, dump the Snake Eye Ash, then do Fiendsmith combo, and instead of making a Wave High King, now you make an M7 to get back that Snake Eye Ash. And so, on top of that, you also don't have the Lacrima to bring back something so that you can get the Lacrima in the graveyard to deal, to deal 1,200 points of burn damage. And the burn damage, more than anything, is what made the card absolutely insane. You know, because if they were going the Lacrima line, you could nib them. They still have full combo with their other Snake Eye cards. But the fact was that they were doing 1,200 burn damage, and they were going to take forever to play out their turn anyway. You know, something that I saw someone talk about, I forget who it was that said this, but they said that because of the Fiendsmith cards and because of how long turns take, basically people would just play out game one and if they won game one they won the match because by the time you go to game three you're not gonna have a lot of time left on the clock because turns took so long you know players playing on each other's turns that you could just lack them a burn for the win that's why we saw people playing things like spooky dogwood and even mulch army things like that um apo gone again this is another hit to snake eyes end board like if you watch my tier list video shameless plug um i talk about uh hitting apo hits the end board of Snake Eyes. So what is the end board going to be now? Off the top of my head, the ban list is uh, just over an hour old. Flamberge with a Mascarena, maybe something else to like go into a little night. I, I can't think of anything else that you could really end on, right? And so maybe they play them like the Millennium Monsters as like a sub engine to more easier, more easily get into like the Fiendsmith cards that's not really accomplishing anything unless you're going to like make a wave hiking and then go like bonfire and a poplar and have plays. I don't know. I think that Apollos is a really solid hit though. Um, I'm shocked that they got rid of Apo. I didn't think they were going to do it. Some people were saying to get rid of Mascarena, but they, they went the Apo line. King Calamity really doesn't need any sort of excla explanation. Um, Centurion was a good deck with it. And then Beatrice, I don't think that needs any sort of explanation. Uh, the last time we had an August list was actually 2016, and Beatrice went to one. So pretty poetic to see it be banned on this August list. Uh, limited Eva, this is just a hit to Voiceless Voice. I'm sure some people are going to troll and be like, oh, it's a hit to Drytron. Yeah, Drytron's over at table 205, Pim. Um, Eva to one, I think it's just a pretty solid hit. I think the Voiceless is still going to be a solid deck. Ash and Poplar, it, it's consistency hits um, to Snake Eye. And the thing is, with Snake Eye, hitting Poplar and Ash to one, we still have three Bonfire. Unlike the OCG that I think has Bonfire like two or one at this point, 
And so you still have pretty decent consistency as an engine within Snake Eye. And on top of that, correct me if I'm wrong now that I think about it, I think you could still do the 60 card uh, Volcanic FTK, I think. I could be wrong about that now that Ash and Poplar are at one, um, but you still have access to triple bonfire. So like, if you can't do the Volcanic FTK, I imagine you could still do lines with like Snake Eyes. Um, so maybe that's what the deck evolves into is just Volcanic FTK since the Spiritual Fire Art is clearly not banned. So uh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about those Snake Eye hits. It all depends on what the end board is. Because Snake Eye as an engine, even with OSS and all this stuff, it's fine in theory. But it's the fact of what the end board becomes, as my phone blows up, what your end board becomes that makes it so busted. Um, and then the gimmick puppet stuff, I think, doesn't really need an explanation. Branded Fusion to one, we talked about in the tier list. If you're one of Branded Fusion gets ashed, you're not going to gimmick puppet lock me, pimp. Opening a Spirit Gates to one doesn't matter because it's like you just max out on Dark Beckoning Beast. You're just more susceptible to droll. Pot of Prosperity following the line of uh, the OCG, putting it to one. Um, it's it's a solid hit, honestly. It needed to go to one. Sang and Summoning to one, it's it's a good field spell. It needs to go to one. And then Skill Drain to one, it's because all the meta decks are playing it. Similar to like Mystic Mind, how meta decks started playing it, and they banned it. That grass looks greener. Here's the thing with grass. So my bold prediction is that it's either in Quarter Century Bonanza or it's in the Megatons, because I'm sure that grass looks greener. is super expensive now. Um, but I don't know how good it's going to be. The only deck I can think off the top of my head that's going to play it is like the Joshua Schmidt <laughs> Paleozoic Special um, or like Infernoid 60 card piles or even like tier element piles. Like you play three left arm offering, maybe you play three thrusts so that you can get to like that grass looks greener or left arm. Uh, left arm can of course get you to that grass looks greener. You play grass, you mill a bunch of cards. Um, that has me worried because even though we don't have the issues in Millers, we have the Shufflers and I really don't want to see tier element be a good deck. You know that it's going to be the honeymoon phase of this new format. You know people are going to be trying that kind of shit out. Um, so that makes me really concerned. Um, and then we already talked about skill drain. All of the dragon rulers to two is kind of whatever. Luna Light Tiger is whatever. Colossus and Ib is whatever. I will say I am interested to see if anybody does anything with the dragon rulers now that they're all at two. Um, I think that they could have all come to three and it would have been fine. But I think Konami wants to be a little bit conservative because the dragon rulers, I would argue, is really what catapulted us into modern Yu-Gi-Oh! as we see it today. It was the first iteration of what has now become modern Yu-Gi-Oh!, and I don't think Konami wants to see the Dragon Rulers absolutely running rampant all over again. Um, but yeah, like Luna Light Tiger and all that stuff is just kind of whatever. And then uh, Unlimited, Armageddon Knight, sure. Red Rose Dragon, sure. No one's going to play it. Kirin, Magic Specters are really garbage. They need new support. Plush Fire, remember that Plush Fire does have the errata. Um, so that's why it went from band to three to hard ones per turn now. I still don't think Pendulum's going to be all that good. Ancient Fairies, whatever. Danglongs, whatever. And Time Seal. With Time Seal at three, like, okay... Transaction rollback, a trap trick, trap track into a time seal. Like, time seal is garbage. Like, no, like, no shot that that's, like, ever going to be a thing. But I'm just glad that we have a list. Now, do I think that Snake Eye is still the best deck? Yes, with an asterisk. It is still a good deck because I don't know what the fucking end board is going to be. <laughs> like, if the end board is, like, Flamberge <laughs> plus Mascarena with a wave high king and pass okay like that gets outed by an imperm on the wave high king with a nib like it, it's it's kind of whatever right and i'm sure some people are gonna say avery you shouldn't need both those cards in combination to break the board but like that's modern Yu Gi Oh. now you open up an ash plus imperm i feel that that should be enough to stop any deck or any two combination of hand traps nib plus imperm ash plus imperm ash plus Baylor, whatever opening up a nib and imperm is not that much out of the question i feel but if the end board is just like Flamberge plus Mascarena, and then like you can get out two bodies with the Flamberge when you link it off, like, I guess. Maybe they go back to playing Fire King cards now that I think about it. Because High Avatar Kirin, the like being able to dodge an Imperm to pop a card, whatever, whatever that card does, special summon from the hand, that seems good. But as an engine, I think that kind of fixes it like should should bonfire have gone to one absolutely bonfire should be at one um but like i'm kind of happy and i i think the hit to lacrima and also banning apo actually helps a lot like if you remember i was calling for oak or oss to be fucking banned 
And they didn't go that route. Instead, they did consistency hits and they hit cards that were part of the inboard, which I'm kind of fine with. Because at the end of the day, let's just call it what it is. 100% of Yu-Gi-Oh decks, unless you're playing a rogue table 500 garbage stun deck or whatever, every deck in Yu-Gi-Oh is based off of the extra deck. So whatever your deck can make as an end board from the extra deck, that's what's going to carry you. You know, we don't see main deck monsters carrying a deck anymore unless you're a ritual deck like Voiceless Voice. And even then, you could kind of argue that they focus on the extra deck because they can do things like Dynamondo to help extend their plays, stuff like that. So they still kind of focus on the extra deck in a way. But if your deck puts out like, I don't know, let's say Exodia, for example, you put out the Exodia Incarnate Fusion and you're relying on hand traps plus back row to make it, uh, okay, maybe for a locals, but not for like a regional or a YCS. So... At a glance, like, the more I've thought about it, I'm really happy with this list. Gimmick Puppet FTK is gone. Gimmick Puppet, honestly, as a deck is just garbage. Tempai is still playable, but you only got one field spell, one prosperity. So do with that what you will. It's still playable. I think it's honestly going to be a bit more budget now because I think Trident Dragon is getting a reprint in the tens. I think it's going to be a pretty decent budget deck, especially, like, if you're playing, like, where there's a will, there's a way out that acts like a prosperity or a going second deck, so you're going to expedite a bunch of cards like that anyway. Overall, I'm happy with the list. I'm happy to see something fresh. I got to get ready for regionals because I've got one September 14th and the 28th. I'm probably just going to play Runic Stun at that one in, on September 14th. But like I said in my previous couple of videos, be sure to have it locked into the channel. Hit that ding dong notification bell. Go check out my book that I'm occasionally plugging in. Link down below in the description. Let me know what you think about this format. I really want to get the community's thoughts. And who knows? Maybe we'll see some barfing horse memes. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.